Everyone uses AI assistance today, from CEOs to students, even governments are racing to integrate AI chatbots into our everyday life. But what's powering that convenience? Well, vast server farms, burning through energy, companies logging your every keystroke, and models trained on data no one really ever agreed to share, because let's be honest, we never actually read those privacy policies. The good news is that there are a lot of alternatives to AI assistance these days. In this video, I'll try to find and test some of the most ethical, eco-friendly, and privacy-friendly AI chatbots that I could find. We'll rate each one on transparency, privacy, environmental impact, and how useful they actually are. Because if we continue using AI, we should make sure that it's working for people and not for profit. Before I get to the actual platforms, let's talk about what concerns are surrounding AI these days. When I first tried AI, just like probably many of you, I was amazed. Um, I had long nerdy chats about politics, history, nutrition, even my own mental health. It felt like a genuine revolution in how we think and create. And it really is. But now I always hesitate before I use it. Not because AI is evil or alive or trying to dominate the world, we're not trying to spread conspiracy theories here, but because the way it's built and used has serious consequences on our daily lives that we never really see. So let's break that down. First of all, there are several ethical concerns surrounding AI. AI systems are usually designed to maximize a fixed objective, answer a question, write an email, generate engagement. But as computer scientist Stuart Russell points out, this approach can lead to chaos when those objectives are even slightly wrong. Like a spam filtering AI that deletes all of your emails to be safe, or a bureaucratic AI system that denies access to someone because it follows strict guidelines that are not flexible and do not take everything into consideration. So there's a problem of bias and discrimination in the use of AI, because the models may reflect the bias used while training, leading to racist, sexist, classist outcomes. Moreover, AI threatens to replace workers, especially in administrative, service, or creative jobs. It can generate fake news and deep fakes, and it overall may lead to loss of human judgment, because if we're fully relying on AI to make decisions, then where does our humanity go? That's why Russell says we need three principles when uh, building and using AI systems. Altruism, so AI should value human preferences, not its own output. Humility, it should admit it doesn't fully understand what we want and learning. It should observe us and update, not just execute. He warns that without this safeguards, we're building systems that are uncontrollable and can lead to devastating outcomes. Apart from ethical concerns, there are several very valid environmental issues. We talk a lot about AI's intelligence, but not its appetite. For example, training a model like GPT-4 takes a huge amount of energy. If this trend continues, data centers might become the fifth largest energy consumers in the world. And that doesn't include water that is used to cool servers, which stresses local ecosystems, the diesel generators that are used to back up the grid while training models, or even the hardware which is mined, shipped, and assembled with a massive carbon footprint. And it's not just a one-time cost, because every time we use AI, we fine-tune it, we retrain it, ask a question, the environmental cost adds up. According to MIT, inference at scale, aka using your chatbot daily, could soon overtake model training as the biggest energy drain. So when you see all those posts on social media claiming that saying please and thank you to AI chatbots um, leads to more energy use, you should take it seriously because it's true. Personally, I try to just use it less and whenever I can use a browser search instead of using AI, I do that. And then finally, there are privacy concerns. Because when you chat with an AI, you're not just typing into the void most of the times. Many models are trained on scraped data or personal data without any consent. And then they can also infer a lot of sensitive data about you based on your prompts, like your location, gender, mood, or even medical conditions. And in most cases, it's the same companies building the models that govern this. They can decide what gets stored and deleted, and they can change their privacy rules at any time. That's why authors like Kathy O'Neill say that we need to regulate AI the same way we regulate pharmaceuticals or finance, with auditing, transparency, and real accountability. And thankfully, EU is starting to do just that, so here's to EU's AI privacy leadership. There are so many other concerns that um, I don't want to spend too much time focusing on, but summing up, at this point we can't just quit AI tools altogether, but I do believe that we can choose better systems. Whenever we use something like that, we need to ask who builds it, who benefits from it, and what values are baked in. And that's why I went looking for ethical, open, lower impact alternatives to the bigger AI giants. And by the way, this video was inspired by my Patreon subscriber, Mindaugas. Thank you so much for all the information that you shared. It was very useful. 
So here's what I found. To make this video more structured, I'm going to use the following rating criteria. It includes categories like privacy and data use, open source and transparency, model variety, environmental impact, price and accessibility, and finally features and UX. So first we've got NanoGPT, which has a wonderful concept of hosting many different AI models. It's a cloud-based multimodal platform, and it has a paper prompt policy. It claims that it's fully anonymous. In terms of privacy and data use, I give it five out of five because of its fully anonymous usage, optional registration, supported crypto payment, and locally stored chats. In terms of the open source and transparency criteria, I gave it four stars out of five because it's not fully open source. The platform itself is not, but it aggregates and transparently offers access to open and proprietary models with clear documentation. So I think it deserves four stars out of five. In terms of model variety, I'd say that it's the best one we've got in this video. It gives access to all major models like GPT-4, Claude, Gemini, Mistral, Dipseek, etc. Definitely unmatched by any competitor in this field. When it comes to the environmental impact, unfortunately it loses points. I gave it only two stars out of five. Since it's hosted in the cloud, energy use depends on the providers, but essentially if there is no local option, then there is higher carbon footprint. In terms of price and accessibility, I gave it four out of five because it has an affordable pay per prompt strategy. For example, for only $5, you can get 535 ChatGPT 4.0 prompts, which means that there's no subscription barrier and you can use it without creating an account, which is great. A bonus point for privacy is that you can also pay with crypto. And of course, there is a free model that you can use anytime. As for features and UX, I had nothing to complain about, so I gave it five out of five. It has quite a clean user interface um, it supports images, audio, web tools, frequent updates. There's a slight learning curve um, in terms of changing to different models, but it's not that difficult. So I just give it five out of five. So overall, quite a good start if you're searching for a multi-model AI platform. Next, I decided to check Jan AI or Jan AI, I'm not sure, or AI John. <laughs> so in terms of privacy and data use, I gave it five out of five, solely because everything on Jan AI runs locally or it can be optionally encrypted in the cloud. So you fully control your data. In terms of open source and transparency, I give it four out of five because the code base is partly open. It's pretty clear about how it's stored and where, and what helps is that it has strong community backing. Even I even saw it while downloading it on the website. In terms in terms of model variety, I would give it four out of five so far. It definitely has a lot less models than Nano GPT but I would say that the choice was still quite big. Its environmental impact got five stars out of five for me because it's fully local, which means it has the lowest possible environmental impact. As for price and accessibility, I gave it five out of five. Uh, it's fully free and it's pretty easy. At least I found it pretty easy to, to download it from the website. The only thing is when you install it, you also have to download all the language models that you want. And finally, in terms of features and UX, I gave it four out of five. It has a beautiful modern interface very clean. I would just say that it slightly lags uh, at the very beginning when I downloaded it. Whenever I entered a prompt, it was loading for hours and, and it took some time for it to work again. So I think it's a bit laggy, at least on my MacBook. Next, I decided to check all llama with the cutest llama on its logo. <laughs> You've got five stars from me for privacy and data use because it's fully local and basically nothing can leave your computer. In terms of open source and transparency, again, five out of five. It's fully open source and very transparent about how uh, models work, where they're run and how they're stored. In terms of model variety, I gave it four out of five as well. Again, it has a lot less model variety than um, nano GPT, but still quite a good choice. It supports all open access models like Dipsic, Mistral, Llama and Phi but it still has no access to GPT-4, for example. Again, the environmental impact is the best possible. It gets five out of five because it's local. In terms of price and accessibility, again, five out of five because it's fully free to use. And I found it quite easy to find it and download and install. Finally, as for features and UX, I gave it three out of five. It has a very simple command line. And for example, on my laptop, I have to use the terminal to enter prompts. And at first it felt quite high tech for me because I'm not a coder, but um, then I got used to it and 
I think it's pretty convenient. Our next contender is Venice AI, and it got four out of five from me uh, for its privacy and data usage, because even though it's not fully local, it still hosts your conversations on decentralized nodes. In, in terms of open source and transparency, it got four out of five, because even though it's transparent, it's not fully open, but its back end is based on open source, which is always a good signal. When it comes to model variety, I gave it four out of five, because it offers lesser known powerful models like Dipsy, but the choices are much more limited compared to others. In terms of price and accessibility, it gets a 5 out of 5 because it's fully free, there's no subscription needed, and there's no paywall. And apart from that, it's accessible via browser, so you don't need to download anything. Finally, for its features and UX, I give it 5 out of 5 because I really like its design, I think it's very user-friendly. I just enter the Venice AI website and you can immediately start uh, using the chatbot. So nothing to complain about. Moving on, we have the DuckDuckGo AI chat. If you still want to use OpenAI and Claude, you can still do it behind DuckDuckGo's privacy firewall. So overall, it offers a decent level of protection, but unfortunately, because the models still get your prompts, I give it 4 out of 5. For our next criteria, it got 4 out of 5, because even though it's transparent, it's not fully open, but its back end is based on open source. In terms of model variety, I give it 3 out of 5, because it has major models like GPT and Claude, but uh, the variety of the models may depend on the region and overall is limited. Its environmental impact, um, as you can probably guess, is disappointing. It's only two points out of five because it is fully cloud-based, but when it comes to price and accessibility, it gets five out of five because it's fully free to use and it's very easy to access because there's no account needed. Its features and UX are also quite good, so um, it gets four points out of five. It has clean UI, search integrated chat, it's fast and responsive, but it still doesn't support image and video search. The next AI assistant that we have is Naga AI. It describes itself as a service that aggregates AI models from major companies like uh, OpenAI, Google, Eleven Labs, and many others. What's interesting about it is that it's accessible through Discord. So if you're someone that spends a lot of time on Discord, then you can definitely give a try to Naga AI. But going back to our criteria in terms of privacy, I gave it four stars out of five because it's not open source, it's not local, but at least it acts as a proxy to, for example, OpenAI with added privacy layer. It basically offers IP masking and no tracking so that your data is safe. But of course, it still sends your prompts to those companies. It only gets two points out of five for the next criteria because it's not open source and there's limited insight into how the proxy is run. In terms of model variety, I would give it four out of five because um, it supports uh, a lot of major models, but it's definitely not a five due to its limitedness. And then because it's hosted in the cloud, it only gets two, st two points out of five for its environmental impact because there's no additional information about its green status. It has quite a good price and accessibility uh, with four out of five points because it's overall free, but you have to pay because it offers a limited number of prompts and it's fairly easy to use if you already have Discord. And then for features and UX, I get three out of five because um, it's just a basic chat interface and it's definitely less polished than let's say NanoGPT or Yon AI. Wait until the end to find out which one I recommend the most. The next one is LM Studio. It performs excellently in terms of privacy and data use because it's fully local, it's fully open source and community driven, so it's great also in those terms. The model variety I would say is a bit more limited, or at least that was my perception, so I gave it 3 out of 5. Of course the environmental impact is also much lower because it's local, so I gave it 5 out of 5. And then in terms of price and accessibility, I gave it 3 out of 5 because even though it's fully free, it requires setup, and I found it to be the hardest to set up because it took hours to download a relatively small file. And at the time, I was also downloading things for Yan AI and Llama, and it took much less time. So I definitely think that the problem was with LM Studio. And then in terms of features and UX, I would give it also a 3 out of 5 because it has no fancy UI, but it's quite good if you don't really need any of those fancy features. Some honorable mentions go to private AI and local AI, which uh, are also decent choices if you're looking for or more alternatives and you didn't like the ones that were suggested in this video. So summing up all of this experience, as you can see, we have plenty of choices when it comes to more ethical, privacy-friendly and environmentally friendly AI services. One of my personal favorite discoveries uh, were NanoGPT because of wide variety of models that it offers. 
And after using it for a bit, I quite like Olama actually. It makes me feel like a coder, but that's just my personal thing. <laughs> Here's a summary of all the mentioned uh, AI assistants so you can see for yourself which ones performed better. And let me know in the comments, did I miss anything? Because I'm sure there are so many other alternatives in the world that I might have missed. Um, let me know what you think. And that's it for today's video. Thank you so much for watching it and have a beautiful day. See you in the next one. <laughs>